Hello, this is Gamer Petty, and I built myself a solenoid engine. A solenoid engine is practically um, a cylinder engine with a magnet that pulls the cylinder inwards and creates motion. It's really simple to build and I used a 3D printer to make my parts. So let's have a squiz. I'm using two lap bench power supplies to get up to 60 volts. Because the solenoid is a 24 volt one, I can't go this fast, so I need to but combine two. Ow. Fuck. Remember, don't touch the coil. When the magnetic field collapses, it creates a high voltage spike, which hurt you. Let's stick it onto the box so we get extra resonance and a better sound. The engine can run down to 13 volts. Below that the friction is too high to keep up the motion. Now I'm going to show you my plan and the 3D models and the printing process and the mistakes I made and how I assembled it. So I made the model in Google SketchUp by a scale of 10, which means 100 millimeters are 10 millimeters in the final model. So I can work with a uh, hundredth micrometer resolution because SketchUp can't do micrometers. 
So I exported the file as a STL and loaded up in Cura. Now I reposition the models on the build plate so the print head doesn't crash into each other when printing one after each other. After that I'm checking the settings, 0.2 layer height, 56mm speed and well, export it onto my USB drive for the 3D printer. After the print was successful, I'm removing the uh, part with a razor blade, which is pretty hard when holding a camera. After that, a bit of cleaning is necessary. I'm using the razor blade to cut off the brim. I don't print with rafts because they are huge in Cura and I don't waste, want to waste uh, plastic. The 3D model tolerances are pretty tight and I decided to press fit my parts into each other instead of gluing or screwing and it works really well, I have to say. And I'm trying to push this thing in and it it is hard. It has absolutely no play and you have basically bent plastic surface a bit and smack it with a hammer to make it fit tight. Scraping off the edges with a razor blade also helps uh, pushing the parts together since the lower part is always a little bit thicker since the hot uh, bolt plate is melting the plastic very slowly and make it flow on the uh, lower side. And I'm trying to put the parts together to see if everything fits, which it does. Now I can keep printing and finish the first test model. Doesn't they look nice? 430 euro printer. I really didn't expect that quality from such a cheap printer. Um, I'm using the ANET A8 found on Gearbest, which I bought by myself. As I said, the parts are press fit together. Some parts may need a bit more force than your hands can do. Um, so I'm using a vise to press fit this pin into crankshaft or what is it called? Good motors need bearings. Let's find the right ones and put them by the side, which I press them in later on. Runs very smooth, that's good. Let's assemble the motor. First, I press in the guide, which I don't need later on. Um, the cylinder had such a long throw that it just blocked when it tried to push it back in, and I needed that guide. But later on, I made the throw much shorter so I didn't need it anymore and the motor runs faster. This base plate is actually the version number two 
which I explain you later on. So putting everything together and see if it runs. I added some hex nuts to the crankshaft so you can chain the motors together which I later discarded for some reasons but it was a very nice add-on which can be expanded to it has some potential I think and the parts fitted very well together no rattling nothing For the next step I need some parts, so I'm looking in my Genesium box and I'm looking for light gates. Since I planned to do the motors with light gates, but the final version had a switch, it was much easier and you see why in a few seconds. Where the hell is it? There it is, nice. The circuit is very easy. I later on added a second Zener diode on the LED side to clamp down the voltage a bit and a second resistor on their side. Basically the um, sensor side, the right side, is an NPN transistor in the light gate and a Zener diode to limit the voltage to 10 volts for the MOSFET. So after a bit of soldering it was ready for the first test run. The working principle is very easy to understand. If the light beam gets broken, the magnet turns on. And this is what it's doing. But since it involves so many parts and sensitive parts like the emitter LED, it's hard to make it run on higher voltages. Since this motor will run up to 60 volts later on, I discarded this solution pretty quick. Let's see if it works. The first test run. But before I discarded the idea, I wanted to get rid of the light gates on top since they look ugly and I need that overhang and nah, it could be better. So I got some smaller light gates which I built into the base which you may have seen in the assemble clip. To make them fit perfectly I had to create 3D model with the same dimensions, so I can uh, modify my base plate to stick it in. And while I was working on, I also printed the flywheel. Again, it's a very tight fit and I had to cut the slot in there so the sensor bar on the crankshaft doesn't stick to the bed. And this is how it looks assembled and how it works. You see the sensor bar on the crankshaft, which is also pretty ugly, that's why I discarded it. And if it passes the light gate, well, the circuitry gets active. So I quickly made a prototype board to see if it works, which 
also a later discarded because it was too bulky and didn't really look, look nice and nah, it just didn't fit. So I remade the circuit without a uh, PCB to make it a lot smaller, but this made a little problem. Somehow when pressing in the sensor, it stops working. Well, when I connect the sensor now, it works, but not when it's in the model, which is very frustrating. So that was the final reason to discard the light gate. And the final version has now a switch, which this part is for. The last step was to make the flywheel, which is very simple. It's just a part that holds M6 nuts to give it some extra weight, which uh, increases the mass and so its momentum when it's spinning. This keeps the motor running smoothly. And this is the finished part. Thank you for watching. If you like, you can subscribe or like this video. It's up to you. Check out my channel for other videos you may find interesting.